Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back into Otram's YouTube channel. Today we've got kind of a two-for-one video. We've got a 2006 uh, Toyota Land Cruiser that has had a failure in the secondary air injection system. So we're going to replace all the secondary air components and we're going to do a starter while we're in there. And since you've got to pull all the secondary air stuff out to do the starter anyway, this will serve as how to do a starter video. Uh, so let me reposition the cameras and we'll get started. So normally you would take the engine sight shield off. This one was already off because it's missing all the bolts. So the next thing we need to do is take the air intake off. So we'll just undo the clamp here at the throttle body. Man, this truck is crunchy. We'll loosen that up. And then we'll unplug the mass airflow sensor and unclip the air box lid. And then you've got a little vacuum hose back here, a bigger one right up here. And then there's another one hidden on the front here that this one's got a clamp on it that I'm gonna have to get a screwdriver for. Normally there's not a clamp on here and it just pops off. Pop that hose off and set it to the side. And then I couldn't get the camera high enough for you to see, but there's a 10 millimeter headed bolt right down here holding the air box on, like this little muffler thing that comes off the back. And then there's another one back here at the back of the air box. And then that'll just wiggle and come off of there. So up here at the front, you've got a temp sensor. We're gonna unplug that. Sometimes there are two plugs or two plugs here. I don't know what the second one is, but it's easiest if you unplug them both. It gives you a little bit more room when you're going to wiggle the intake out. And then we're gonna unclip the wire harness. And then it's missing the clip up here, so we're just gonna cut the zip tie on it. And that'll give us, again, a little bit more room to play with. And then we'll undo the fuel injectors on this side. Or not un undo them, unclip the harness connectors. Come on. There we go. And you want to be pretty gentle with the injector connectors because uh, they're usually pretty brittle by the time they get to this age. There we go. And that'll give us enough room to pop the intake up out of there. And normally, if you follow this wiring harness down, straight down, there'll be another 10 millimeter headed bolt holding that harness down to the head. That one's missing, but you're gonna wanna undo that one as well. And let me move the camera to the other side and we'll do everything that's gotta come off over here. So now that we've moved over to the passenger side, or the driver's side rather, we can undo the purge valve hose and also its wiring. Oh, and that was not so funny on my funny bone. You can unplug that guy.
and we can unplug this ground strap back here, which I don't know what <laughs> the, somebody has just butchered all of the electrical connectors on this. Um, and then we're gonna undo the breather hose on this side. <sighs> Spin that down out of our way. Let me grab panel poppers and we'll pop that harness loose. Actually, rather than risk messing up that push pin, Just gonna unbolt that so we can swing it out of the way. And then, kind of same as on the other side, I'm gonna unplug the harnesses and unplug the fuel injectors. Come on. There we go. These new uh, electrical connector pliers from Lyle are really nice for when stuff like this doesn't want to cooperate and it's down there in a tight spot. There's the last of those. And you just kind of want to, you know, look and make sure you've got everything free. And then back here on the back side of the intake, there's a little 10 millimeter headed bolt that's holding a, uh, the other side of that wiring harness on. So we're gonna take that out.
go. And then rather than drain the cooling system to unhook the throttle body uh, warming hoses, I'm just gonna pop the throttle body off the front of the intake and lay it to the side so that I don't have to break into the cooling system. So it's just uh, two bolts or three bolts and a nut here on the front. And then that'll just wiggle off of there. Oh, it would if that stud wasn't still there. Okay, I ended up just taking a stud remover, pulling that top stud, and then undoing the mass airflow sensor plug so that I could pop this a little further out of my way. And now we can take all the bolts that are holding the intake down out. I like to use uh, 12 millimeter swivel socket with a locking extension on the bottom and then a regular extension on the top. When you've got this fed down there and you lift it back up, it likes to grab your socket off and then your socket falls down under the intake, which is a huge pain. Uh, and I like to start in the middle and, you know, kind of bounce back and forth taking these off. Some of these are a lot of fun to get started. Actually, I'm gonna take the secondary air valves loose and just flop them to the side because they're making it hard to get a good angle on that middle bolt. Sometimes you can snake your socket under there easily. This one's not wanting to cooperate. There we go, much better. And then you're just gonna want a magnet to reach down there and grab the bolts once you've, well, I'm blind. The bolt came out with my socket. Um, so yeah, there's three bolts and two nuts on each side. I'm going to pull all those out and then I'll come back and we'll pull the intake off. Oh, and in case I guess I've got the camera on the wrong side, you're going down the side of the intake and if you actually look straight down on the fuel rail, you'll see a little cutout where all the bolts are. There's a nut bolt, 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 nut on each side. So let me undo those and we'll come back. Okay, so now we've got the intake loose. And I should have mentioned at the beginning, I have the negative cable unhooked from the battery and a cap over the negative terminal. Um, that'll be especially important when we start actually pulling the starter wires off. Uh, but I just realized I forgot to mention that. And then back here in the back corner, You'll see this orange clip. We're gonna pull up on that. Sometimes it's easier if you actually just take it all the way off. We 
go, and then you'll see two blue push-ins, and you'll push those in, and then you can undo the fuel line. And I'm gonna tuck that back up here so it's kind of a high point. Uh, and I also have the gas cap unscrewed at the back. Um, I found if you don't unscrew the gas cap, uh, like when it gets warm in the afternoon, from being the tank being cold, it'll push fuel up. And if you undo the gas cap, it won't push fuel, or at least not as bad. And then up here on the fuel filter, we're gonna do the same thing. Come on. It's weird, this truck is pretty clean underneath, but it is really crusty up top. There we go. And then there's the fuel line off the fuel filter. And just double check that we've got everything loose. Looks like we do. I'm gonna stand back here on the upper control arm mount. It, the intake likes to wedge on the, uh, the engine lift brackets. And then just be careful. You've got to fish the return line out from under the wiring harness there. So there we've got the intake off. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a nice mouse house sitting right down here. So I'm gonna get the vacuum. I'm gonna clean up the mouse house and I'm gonna vacuum everything up that's along these intake ports so that nothing falls down into the intake uh, or actually into the head. Uh, so, and then I'll stick paper towels down all the ports to keep those clean while we're working on everything under here. Um, but here you can see secondary air pump, uh, one of the switching valves, the starter, and then the other two switching valves are on the back under this harness. Um, and a lot of fun to get to. So let me clean this up and I'll bring you right back. Okay, so we've got all the mouse house and everything vacuumed up from in here. And we've got uh, paper towels shoved down all of the intake ports uh, so we don't drop anything in here. And now we can get to start to taking the secondary air injection stuff out. Uh, on the earlier 100 series, without air and secondary air injection, you could just skip forward to pulling the starter at this point. Uh, but with the secondary air, you've got to pull this out in order to have enough room to get the starter out. And it also helps to have the two... Uh, the air valves back here out of the way makes it easier to get to the actual starter bolts. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just start unplugging all of the harnesses. And let me grab my pliers for that one. Yeah, there we go. So we've got the pump motor undone, the first valve, and then the sensor for the valve out of the way. And we can come down here 
and move our spring clamps back. I'm not sure which end of this hose I'm going to undo yet, so I'm going to go ahead and pull both ends of the hose. And then we can take the whole bracket that's holding the pump out. Now, if I can get the socket on the... There we go. I'm going to take this hose off. So it's out of my way. There we go. The hoses get super stiff and really hard to take apart. Um, but here, you've got the motor and it's unfiltered on the intake. Um, and they get water in them. Water gets down into the fan, freezes, and then when it tries to turn on in the winter, it shatters all the fan blades and then the fan blades go downstream and get stuck in all of the valves. Uh, so whenever we replace them, we replace the pump and all the valves at the same time because you can never get all the shrapnel out of everything. And there's another mouse house under this. So I'm gonna vacuum that up and I'll be back. So next up, we've got to pull the two switching valves that sit back here and they look like this guy here. Um, there's two bolts that come down from the top, and then two that come out the side here that go to the pipes. The two on the top aren't too hateful to get. You can kind of wiggle this harness around to get to them. The side ones can be more fun, especially the driver's side because this whole bulky harness is in the way. Um, since you guys aren't going to get anything but a view of my backside while I'm trying to unbolt these, I'm going to unbolt these off camera and then come back. Just know that they're not fun. And there's two of them. This one's passenger side one, um, cause it sits like that. And then there's a mirror image of it that goes on the driver's side. So let me get these pulled out and I'll be right back. Okay. So I know I said I wasn't going to show taking these out. Uh, but I actually, I've always tried coming through from the front, uh, and it actually figured out it's easier if I put my left foot on top of the passenger strut mount, I can reach over the backside and then come around and get these outside, uh, pipe bolts, um, with way more room then trying to get them from the front. 
Don't know why that never occurred to me before. Um, but yeah. So there I've got the pipes off of both of them. And now I just need to take the top bolts out. two of them. Okay, so I got the bolts out of these valves, and now we can just bring them up from underneath of here. Oh, maybe. And there we go. And then the only nice thing Toyota did in this design was make it so the gaskets snap on uh, so you don't lose them. So I'm gonna set these off to the side because I'm gonna you know, swap the hoses over to the new ones. And I heard one of the pipe gaskets drop. Oh, there it is. So I'll fish that out. And then we can start messing with taking the starter out. Okay, so now that we can start taking the starter out, uh, if you look, there's a kind of a yellowy beige plastic harness here that has a tab that comes to the back side of the starter. Back here, kind of under where we just took the valves out, there's a 12 millimeter headed bolt that goes in there that you're gonna need to take out. And then I'm gonna take the two grounds loose out of the block down here so we have some more room. And then that'll give us enough room that we can come in the side and unplug the starter signal wire. Undo the starter so I've got a little bit more room. And there's two 14 millimeter headed bolts that come through the back of the block And there's one of them, and they have this nice long head on them. So at least you have something to get a grip to, and it kind of sticks out a little bit. And the other one is kind of back under this plastic harness piece. And 
I'm gonna go get a little mini ratchet to finish taking that out. This little mini ratchet, for years I thought they were the dumbest thing ever. And then on a whim I bought one. And I tell you what, you don't use it a lot, but it can be a lifesaver. the other one and when you're wiggling this out you want to be aware of the knock sensors that are kind of sitting next to it um, because you don't want to break the connectors off of those but then once it's loose you can kind of spin it up enough to get down here to the uh, I'm going brain dead. To the bolt that's holding the battery cable to the starter, or the nut. And then with that nut off, you can wiggle the starter out. And then that's the nut I just took loose. Okay, so we've got our new starter from Toyota. And I'm just gonna show you, this is where that bolt hole that I took the little 12 millimeter headed bolt out that was hidden, it goes through this bracket and into there. Um, just so you know where that came from. And then you want to look down here, make sure there's not a lot of corrosion or anything in the bore where this sits, because sometimes it can make it really tight to get these back in. We'll kind of wiggle this down in there. up like this I can actually get to that little back bolt so I'm gonna go ahead and start it so I can get to it And then I'll tighten that 
once I've shoved everything back through. Then I can take the new nut for the starter stud, put it on. go. And then we can snap the little cover back on over top of that. Although I doubt that's actually going to stay put. And then we can put our starter wire, our signal wire back in. And then we can start wiggling that back home. And then it kind of helps if you just wiggle the starter a little bit so you can get that bolt started. That is nice. They've got a little bit of a point to them to try to help get them going. I got the starter bolts tight and I can come in and tighten up that bolt holding the harness on. Go. And we can put our two ground wires back on. Let me go prep my valves and I'll come back. So try as I might, I cannot get a good angle on this to show you, but down in the valve, in the old one, you can see foam from the original pump filter is jammed in that valve holding it open. Um, so that's what I was trying to say where the shrapnel from the fan exploding goes through and contaminates everything. 
So we've got our new valves and the gaskets to them just snap on, which is really nice. There's some ears on the sides that hold them. It's easiest if you get, you know, the bolts loosely started on both ends. Because you want a little bit of wiggle room. So you can get everything lined up. And then the two bolts that go in sideways, one of them broke coming out and all of them felt a little crunchy, so I'm gonna put new bolts in as I put it back together, just so that I don't have one snap off while I'm tightening it. And these pipes that go down to the manifolds, they've got some flex to them, and they can kinda bend a little bit, so sometimes when you pull everything out, they'll, kind of bend out of the way, and you'll have to tweak them back a little bit to get everything to line up. It's kind of another reason. It's nice to leave everything loose until everything's started. So I got all my bolts started. I'm gonna tighten those up and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so we've got our new pump, it comes with a new bracket, and then a new valve. These come separately. I transferred over the, the hose and the bolts off camera. And I also put the vacuum hoses back on while I was at, at it back in the back. So now we can wrestle this guy in. Okay, so after all that wrestling to get that back in, this hose back here ended up splitting. So I'm gonna have to get a new one of those, um, which I should have had one on hand to start, but didn't. So I ended up finding that hose in my stash after all. Um, so I replaced that hose, I've got everything bolted in. Um, the bolts holding the secondary air pump down were really crusty coming out, so I put new bolts in there. And I've cleaned up the manifold surfaces here, and then ran the vacuum cleaner over everything again to make sure any dirt and debris that fell down on top of my uh, paper towels uh, got sucked up before I take all the towels out. And then I've also pressed new gaskets into the bottom of the intake in prep for putting it back on. So I'm gonna go grab Cody and have him give me a hand dropping this in. I'm probably gonna move all the cameras so that we don't knock the camera over while we're doing this. But the only real trick to putting the manifold back down is to make sure that you fish that uh, fuel hose under this wiring harness and don't kink it when you're putting it down. And you also want to make sure that you don't drag the intake over anything and peel those new gaskets or new seals out of the bottom of the intake. And again, 
make sure you don't pinch any of the wires underneath. Uh, basically, it's a whole lot of making sure that you don't pinch anything under the intake uh, while you're putting it in. And of course, before you put it on, you know, you want to make sure your vacuum lines are in, that everything under here is plugged in uh, so that you're not going back through and chasing your tail trying to find any of that later. So yeah, I'll be right back as soon as we drop that back on. Okay, so we've got the uh, intake sitting back on here, and I forgot to mention two other things to check before you put the intake back on. Uh, one, make sure you take all the paper towels out of the ports. I almost forgot to do that again on this one. And second, um, there are, I can't, of course, not that the intake's on, I can't show them to you, but there's little metal spacer rings that go in the, like the plastic intake where the bolts go through. Make sure those haven't fallen out. Um, I've seen those fall out a couple of times. This one, they all stayed in, but you just want to be aware of that. Um, and then I started, <laughs> I didn't realize I didn't turn the camera on and I put the uh, throttle body back on and started putting some of the hoses in and like we can put this PCV hose back on before we forget. Uh, I already went through and put all my injector plugs and all of my harness plugs in because I had, when I was trying to seat the intake, one of the injector plugs was stuck under it. So once it was down far enough, I just went ahead and put all the injector plugs in to hold them out of the way. And I also put the bolt back here that goes on the wiring harness at the back of the intake. Um, and then next up, we just need to put all the bolts back in the intake. And it's just these three longer bolts go in the middle and then a nut at each corner. Those get torqued to 13 foot pounds and start in the middle and work your way out in an X pattern. And I usually go over them twice just to make sure everything's seated. So let me put all those in and I will bring you back because I doubt you want to sit here and watch me cuss and fish bolts down into the holes. And I should mention, I like to use a magnet um, on a stick and then I'll stick the bolt to it and then use that to fish everything down. Then you kind of get a finger in sideways under the fuel rail to hold the bolt there while you pull the magnet back out. Uh, that seems to work a lot better than trying to just drop the bolts in. Okay, now I'm leaving. I'm going to torque everything and I'll be back. Okay, so we've got the intake all torqued back down. Now we can take our fuel feed line and snap it back onto the fuel filter. Make sure that snaps well. And then back here, we'll put this little orange retainer back on the fuel pipe. And we can take this guy and snap it on there. Come on. There we go. Nope. There we go. And you always want to, you know, give it a tug to make sure that it's locked on there. And then we'll snap that orange retainer back over it. And then we can take this breather line, I guess it's the purge line, snap that back on. And I just dropped a bolt. There it is. Yo. And we'll 
put this bracket back on. I took it off to avoid undoing that zip tie bracket and it turned out the zip tie bracket was broken anyway, so it didn't matter. Go. Now we can put this vacuum switching valve back on on this side. And then the vacuum lines that come up from around back and the switching valves just go on here. And then there's one that comes out from under the front of the intake. And it goes on the long pipe here in the front. And then we can plug in the electrical connectors. And there we go, and we just kind of want to look, make sure, you know, we've got everything plugged in, all of our hoses are back, um, all our plugs are in, everything's tightened down that we took loose, and we're looking good. So then we can grab the air intake. Stick it on, stick the one hose that comes up from the power steering box or power steering pump on, a breather hose. Come on, goes back on there. And this little one from the fuel damper on there. And then the two bolts to hold the resonator box back on. And we can tighten up the hose clamp here at the front for the intake. And then you'd go ahead and put your negative terminal back on the battery. I've got some more work to do, so I'm going to leave that off for now. And that's the down and dirty, how to do a secondary air injection replacement and starter on a 4.7 engine in a 100 series Land Cruiser. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.